The connection between clownfish and their anemone homes is as amazing as the connection between zooxanthellae and the giant tridacta. You just can't imagine one without the other. <laughs> You see, clownfish can live among the anemone's stinging tentacles because their bodies are coated with protective mucus. Mucus? Yuck! That's why it's never a good idea to shake fins with a clownfish. Paracantherus hepatus are delightful little creatures. Unusual for the sea, these fish are vegetarians. Like a cow, they digest plant matter by fermenting it in their gut. Also like a cow, their bodies conceal sharp spines, which they use to defend themselves against predators with a... Huh? What? What's that? Oh. Since when? Uh, I have just been informed that cows do not have sharp spines concealed on their bodies. So, moving along. Ah, the lovely black and white humbug, also known as the zebrafish. With its striking black and white stripes, some might be tempted to call it the striper, or the vertical blind, or the picket fence in front of coal, or the ebony and ivory fish. You might call it the barcode, or the white bread pumpernickel, white bread pumpernickel, white bread pumpernickel fish. But for me, this fascinating little flipper will always be known as Frank. Zebrasoma flavescents are herbivorous, eating all manner of plant life. Their short snout is evolved for the specialized task of grazing on algae which grows on rocks. The mouth and surrounding skin has toughened to withstand the impact with the rough reef surface. This modified nose may be great for finding food, but it makes it almost impossible for them to wear glasses. The common name for the Lismata amboinensis is the cleaner shrimp. This aptly describes the amazing role these little creatures play. The cleaner shrimp climb aboard other creatures and pick off parasites. This provides food for the shrimp and keeps the other ocean dwellers healthy. Eating so quickly, the shrimp appear to be beating on their own chest. But recently, scientists have determined that this chest beating is simply the shrimp's way of asking for the check at the end of the meal. The spectacular Zanclus cornutus is an unmistakable fish, with its bold coloration, projecting snout, and dorsal fin augmented with a long filamentous extension. Say that with me, kids. Filamentous extension. The genus name Zanclus comes from the Greek word for sickle, inspired by the sickle-shaped dorsal fin. Gosh, aren't fish names fun? Even the study of fish is fun to say. Ichthyology. <laughs> Ichthyology. Oh, I love that. The hippocampus cuda, otherwise known as the seahorse, whoa boy, is one of nature's most curious designs. Covered in bony plates, which serve as a kind of armor, these lovely but shy creatures have an unusual method of propulsion. The dorsal fin undulates, acting like a small propeller. <laughs> Maybe we should call them helicopterous cuda. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Helico <laughs> He's a helicopter. <laughs> okay, we're done. The starfish may appear lifeless and motionless, but in fact, they're one of the most dynamic and exciting creatures in the sea. These living wonders move in remarkable ways. But the trick is to be patient. Take it from Mr. Ray. When they move, it's truly worth the wait. Let's watch. Ever so slightly and... Okay, nothing yet. Remember patience. Every movement is like a jewel to be studied. Wait, is, is that, is that? No, nothing. Oh, who are we kidding? Is this thing even alive? It's like watching algae grow. I just, oh, forget it. That's enough of this starfish. I've had it up to. After swimming many miles, mother turtles crawl up on the beach to lay their eggs. Once buried in the sand, the mothers leave the eggs and return to the ocean. When the eggs hatch, these feisty little newborns are the very definition of self-reliance. 
Their remarkable instinct leads them to the ocean, where they swim deep out to sea, searching for their mother to ask, Hey, what's the big idea leaving us all buried here in the sand, huh? Were you ever gonna come back and check on us? It's at this point that the mother turtle would send the baby turtles to their room for a time out. And that, boys and girls, is a little glimpse of why Mrs. Ray and I never had kids. Now the diet on Holocanthus may be cute, but it also happens to be one of the most poisonous fish in the sea. It's known as the puffer fish because when threatened, it puffs up to appear more powerful. To achieve this amazing shape, it fills its body with water to stretch its skin. This pokes out its sharp spines, which make it impossible for predators to ingest them. Unfortunately, once the puffer fish is inflated, it still is at the mercy of others in the ocean, namely the local teenage fish who use them as volleyballs or floats in the parade. While many think of great white sharks as brutal, cold-blooded killers, the Cacaridon cacarius is actually a brutal, warm-blooded killer. These powerful swimmers can hunt in cold water because they maintain their own temperature. Surprisingly, for a predator this large, they can even launch themselves out of the water to land on prey from above. Isn't that great? No one's safe on land or sea. <laughs> no one is safe. <laughs> If anybody needs me, I'll be buried in the sand right over there. Bye! The Grandma Loretto feeds on drifting plankton and small crustaceans. It has the remarkable ability to swim upside down easily. While colorful and attractive, the Royal Grandma is a shy and secretive fish. What secrets does this tiny swimmer hold so tightly? What does a fish know that would make him so secretive? Is there something we don't know that we should know? Hey, little fella, let us in on the secret. Why won't you tell me, you impenetrable royal grandma, with your secretive ways? I vow that one day I will discover your secret. Mark my words. Whoa, now there's something I know a thing or two about me. With unusually large brains, rays are some of the smartest creatures on the reef, if I do say so myself. Though graceful and majestic, rays are not built for speed, but we can cover ourselves with sand as a clever defense mechanism. Remember, it's harder to get hunted when your predators can't see you. Being crepuscular, most of our activity is in the low light of dawn or dusk. And darkness is no problem for rays because we sense things electrically. In fact, I'm sensing your DVD player right now! Some people refer to the 1,000 mile long Great Barrier Reef as the largest living organism in the world. When parrotfish sleep at night, they nestle in a mucus cocoon that keeps their scent from reaching predators. Amazingly, a full-grown octopus over two feet long can squeeze through a hole the size of a quarter. Some sharks replace their teeth every two to four weeks. That's a lot of work for the underwater tooth fairy. Ancestors of the whale once walked on land. In fact, today's whales are actually cousins of the hippo. Most of the sand on the Great Barrier Reef is the result of parrotfish eating coral and excreting the undigestible crushed limestone. Fish don't have eyelids, so never enter a staring contest with a fish. <laughs> 